The buyout for Scott Frost does drop on August 1st, excuse me, on October 1st from 15 million down to seven and a half million. It is unlikely that he will continue to be the Nebraska football coach, uh, whether it's at the end of this season or in the middle of the season or whatever. He, he will no longer be the Nebraska football coach at some point. So what is the next step? What do we end up doing here? Um, let's go on and pull up a, a, an interesting tweet. And this is just a random, you know, whatever. But I'm going to pull it up on the screen for those that can see it. It says, for those who asked, here's my list of potential Nebraska coaching candidates and what categories I think they fall in. For, for this guy, it said, make them say no. Dave Aranda, Lane Kiffin, Kyle Whittingham, and Chris Peterson. None of them are going to Nebraska. Uh, good and gettable. Campbell, O'Brien, Kleinman. Um, okay, maybe. Good non-Power 5, Chadwell, Munkin, Sataki, and Leipold. Uh, yeah, I like Leipold. Maybe. Uh, Sataki's not leaving BYU, especially heading into the Big 12. I mean, that's crazy. Jeff Munkin, I think that that would be a good get. But also, uh, I don't know that anybody's going to be... I don't know about the administration there and whether <laughs> if they would want to go back to uh, running the triple, which I don't think that Munkin would do. I think Chadwell would be a good get at Coastal Carolina because it is a mix of the triple and some other really fun elements. But regardless, uh, along with that second chance, guys, he put Hugh Freeze, Brady Hoke, and Gus Malzahn. Uh, to me, I've got... I've got a couple of names here. I think Jeff Halfley at Boston College could be very interesting there. Uh, Taylor at Kent State could be interesting. What you're looking for is a coach that is proven to build a culture, and you have to give him time to do it. I think the issue that we have run into with Nebraska, at least, how about this, not even Nebraska, it is these AAC coaches that leave and get these bigger jobs, right? Right. Uh, because in the AAC, you are still in a G5 league where talent can overwhelm teams. So you don't have to have scheme down. You don't have to have culture down. All you have to do is get better guys than the other guys. And yes, it's like that across the college football landscape. If your guys are better than the other guys, you're probably going to win more often. But at Nebraska, you aren't always going to have better guys than the guys that are lining up across from you. They didn't even have much of an athletic advantage over Northwestern. I mean, it's the it's the truth. Five years in to the Scott Frost era, and they could not out-athlete Northwestern. That is an issue, right? So, uh, to me, you're looking for guys that have built something that may not, and Jeff Halfley uh, may not have built anything yet, right? It, like, we think that he's got culture and all that, but, you know, he's having the same record as the guys that were fired before him. Right, Tom O'Brien, um, good gracious, who was the other guy? Steve Adazio, et cetera. I mean, Adazio went six and six or seven and five every year, and they just got tired of it. Halfley's done the same thing so far, so I, you know, I do think that Halfley is at least uh, trajecting up. That's the way I see it. But my other one, Lance Leipold, of course, was brought up. He's at Kansas now, and he's obviously building something that's that looks fun. That looks like he's really getting them in the right place. Uh, and he certainly did it at Buffalo because Buffalo is not an easy place to win. He did the same thing at Wisconsin Whitewater. Like, he knows what he's doing building a program. And if you give him a place with the resources like Nebraska, I think he's going to do really, really well. So now the question is can you hire Kansas's coach off of like a three and nine or a four and eight year, right? And we don't even know that they're going to get to four. But can you sell that to your fan base? I think they can. But, again, this is... Do you do you do something that you know is right, regardless of what the fans say? And Lance Leipold would be that. Now, the other one would be Mark Stoops. You let Mark Stoops go like 7-5, and 8-4, and four, something like that this year, uh, lose a quarterback. You know, he's still developing at Kentucky, etc. You know that that Iowa job is not coming open for quite some time. At least we think that because you may have to, you may have to pull Kirk Ferentz out of there. Like he may just die on the job, uh, and that'll be for quite some time. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying anything crazy, 
So don't anybody get started in the comments. But uh, Mark Stoops would fit at Nebraska really, really well. And if you put in some kind of a clause there where he's only got to win, you know, eight games a year or whatever it is at, to get a contract extension, the way that he's got it set up in Kentucky, basically. If you do something along those lines to make it where it would be good for him to leave, yeah, because the SEC East is getting more difficult. It just is. What he's been feeding on, the way that he's been developing there, et cetera, in Lexington, I don't know that you're going to be able to do that going forward. So he does have a head start on everybody. He is, he's is—he's got a good program. But I'm telling you, I think Mark Stoops would be really, really good and a foundation setter for Nebraska. So for me, I mean, my money is on Stoops, uh, Leipold, or Halfley. Those are the three. If I am a Nebraska fan, those are who I want. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.